All right, we're going to talk about real applications of normal distributions. Okay, so z-score, this is kind of where we're going to uh, find our z-score. So what we're going to do is z-score is equal to x minus mu over a sigma. Okay, so we're going to take our value minus our mean over our standard deviation. We're going to typically round those z-scores to two decimal places. Okay, so procedure for finding areas with a non-standard normal distribution. Sketch a normal curve, uh, uh, label the mean and any specific x values, and then shade the reason represented the desired probability. Uh, for each relevant x, that is a boundary for the shade, shaded region. Uh, use a formula in the previous slide to convert that value to an equivalent z-score. Okay. Um, with many technologies, Excel, you can a lot of times skip this step. Okay. It's going to do it for you. Uh, use technology, software, or cal calculator, or a z-score table. Um, our book, it's A2, to find the area of the shaded region. This area is a desired probability. So we talked about uh, last time about how area and probability kind of go hand in hand in that, that normal curve. And so sometimes we have to subtract those. Um, sometimes we're just looking at the area to the left of it. Okay, what proportion... Uh, of men are taller than 72 inches. So heights of men are normally distributed, right? Normally distributed with a mean of 68.6 inches and a standard deviation of 0.28 inches. Find the percentage of men who are uh, taller than a shower head of 72 inches, okay? So the first thing we're looking at is when I go in here, I'm gonna sketch my normal curve. It doesn't have to be great. I'm gonna put in my mean here, uh, 68.6. Here's my 72, right? And I'm really looking at this area here. So I'm really looking at finding the area of this side, the left side, and subtracting it from one. So the first thing I need to do is convert this to a z-score. So I'm going to use my z-square formula. So I'm going to go 72 minus 68.6 uh, over 2.8. I get a z-score of 1.21. Now I'm going to use table uh, A2. I find the area to the left of 1.21 is 0.8869. So the percentage of men over 72 inches is 1 minus 0.8869 or 0.11. Uh, two, three, or 11.23% of males are over 72 inches, okay? Um, example two, the U.S. Air Force requires that pilots have heights between 64 inches and 77 inches. Uh, heights of women are normally distributed with a mean of 63.7 and a standard deviation of 2.9. What percentage of women meet that height requirement? All right, so I'm gonna once again, I'm gonna come here, here's my normally distributed, okay? So now I'm gonna come here and this is 63.7. So now I have one here that is 64, but I have one way out here that is 77. So I'm really trying to find the area between these. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to need to calculate the z-scores for both of these. So the z-score for 77 inches is 77 minus 63.7 over 2.9, which is 4.59. The z-score for 64 is 64 minus 63.7 over 2.9, which is 0.1. Now I'm going to find the areas. I'm going to find the area of, uh, left of 77, the area left of 64, and then subtract them. So using a z-score uh, to find the areas, table A through or technology, I have a z-score of 4.59 gives an area of 0.9999 and a z-score of 0.1 gives an area of 0.5398. So now I'm going to subtract those and the difference is 0.4601. Okay, so 46% of women are going to fall uh, in uh, these height requirements for flight. Okay, so helpful hints. Graphs are helpful, okay? So a lot of times you might see in the slides, I don't draw them in there just because it's hard to put them into a PowerPoint, but they're very useful to see what's going on, okay? 
Uh, don't confuse z-scores and areas. Remember, z-scores are distances along the horizontal scale, but areas are regions under the normal curve. Okay? Uh, choose the correct right or left side of the graph. Uh, z-score must be negative when it is located in the left half of the normal distribution. And areas or probabilities are always between 0 and 1. They are never negative. Okay? Significance, we've talked about significance before. Uh, significantly high, the x value is significantly high if the probability of x or greater is less than or equal to 0.05, or significantly low if the probability of x or less than is less than 0.05. Now, this 0.05 is not absolutely rigid. It could be something else. Um, so this is 5%, it could be 1%, it could be 2.5%. So um, a lot of times they will use a 5% or a 1% depending on what you're looking at. Okay? All right, so that's uh, uh, using the real applications.